early to mid downwind to a right touch and go. Team Sierra, number two, follow the fifth on late downwind on my right. Okay. Team Sierra, and four info. That and join right downwind for the central pad. Right downwind central pad, Kessel 9, I'm leaving 1,500. Kessel 9. Mike Alpha, Quebec, runway 28 right. Rolling the to south, frequency 118 decimal 1. Circuit train, runway 28 right. Runway 04 right, 22 left, not available, due works in progress. Wind at between 340 degrees and 020 degrees, 8 knots. Maximum crosswind, 8 knots. Maximum tailwind, 3 knots. Visibility greater than 10 kilometres. Cloud broken, 2000, with lower patches. Temperature, 31, QNH 1010. On first connect with Archfield Ground or Tower, notify receipt of Delta. Archfield Terminal Information Delta, expect instrument approach. Runway 28 right, rather than approach just north, frequency 123 decimal 6. Runway 28 left, rather than approach just south, frequency 118 decimal 1. Circuit training, runway 28 right. Runway 04 right, 22 left, not available. Kessel 9, Central Pad, clear to land. Clear to land, Kessel 9. 220. 1010. Uh, Anyway, pressure is the key one, yep. confirming that these are aligned somewhere like that. Radios, uh, that nav, that database was updated. Don't come too off. Tune identified test. Okay, is that tuned? I'd Identify we need to do. ADF. Alpha and Bravo active. Eight thousand five hundred. active. Taxiway. Foxtrot two not available. Wind variable five knots. That's all you need to know. Ambly is active. Okay. Test. It's pointing in the same direction. Archer ground, Kilo Juliet Romeo, Cessna 172, Southern Apron. 
In receipt of Delta for a western departure, tracking 220, request taxi. Alpha 1, runway 28 left, Kilo Juliet Romeo. those brakes gently uh, as soon as possible let the taxi start standing over brakes that pressure feels good standing over brakes standing over brakes Numbers. Turn coordinate is good. Decreasing. DI is good. Increasing. Attitude indicator. Probably need to set that a bit better there. Leave that full reach now. Okay. In the event of prior failure abnormality, prior takeoff, I will close the throttle and apply maximum braking. Next to the nearest taxiway. In the event of a fire failure or abnormality after takeoff with remaining runway, I will close the throttle, land on that remaining runway, apply maximum braking and exit the nearest taxiway. 
in the event of fire failure or abnormality after takeoff without remaining runway, I will adopt the glide attitude and select a landing area within 30 degrees of our heading at the time. But in addition to that, the abnormality during the takeoff roll would be any deviation from static RPM of 240028. Uh, correction 240028. What does it say? I can't remember. I think it's 2450. Two, uh, 2280 to 2400. That's it. 2280. Yep. Uh, T's and P's in the green. And airspeed alive. Good. Uh, Kessler, I request you refueling. Uh, request that I go to the turbine park, please. So we'll be uh, departing on runway 28 left for a western departure. Tracking 220. I'll just taxi myself to the ocean then, thank you very much. Tracking uh, 220 to remain north of Greenbank and then uh, making a left turn direct for Spring Mountain and we're requesting clearance from Amberley Delivery during our climb to 2500 Over in your pocket over there, please. Thanks. May not need them. They're just fogging up. Alright, you happy to go? Yeah. Taking over here. Hang over. See that light underneath here? Yep. That'll get a bit hot after a while, so I'll just dim it down for you. That okay. comes on when the nav light's on. Handing I see. Over. Handing over. Taking over. Kilo Juliet Romeo, runway 28 left for Western Departure, ready. Kilo Juliet Romeo, Archer Tower, runway 28 left, clear for takeoff. 28 left, clear for takeoff, Kilo Juliet Romeo.
see the ray dome in the distance. That's, that's a, right. a good aim point. Okay. Uh, for track 220. 220. Keeps you well clear. The critical point is over here where you see the power line, the road, the railway, and then the bulk of Green Bank to the left of it. Oh, this power line, yeah, I've got the power line, I think, just here. This position aimed towards that tall building over at Springfield. Uh, this one just here about 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's it. That keeps us to the western side of the Centenary Motorway. That's where we want to stay. Alright, contact Amberley. 1200, and I'll change this frequency. 134. Decimal yeah. six. Oh, is it? Always refer to the document. Yeah, I'll go over it now. Because you have one, three, two, decimal four. That's Amberley. Okay. So, uh, put the gas on. Alright, and fly. Fly. And talk. And we approach Kilo Juliet Romeo 1100, climbing 2500. Three miles south of Archerfield. Request clearance. Oh, wow. Hello, Juliet Romeo, Amity delivery, man outside controlled airspace, score 1667. Remain outside controlled airspace, 1667. Kilo Juliet Romeo. They probably needed to say our destination. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, Spring Mountain amended 2,500. Right, and we're not south of uh, Archerfield, we're, at, we're east of Goodna. Oh, you're correct, sorry, yes. I'll get there, man. I reckon amended, request amended 2,000, due cloud. But when he talks to you, no, I'll wait till he gets back. Okay. Now Spring Mountain, if you look at the, the low mountains in the foreground, there's a big shadow. Yep, I've got a shadow of the clouds. Look at the highest point of that mountain. So just to the right of the shadow? Uh, central. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, like a little hump. That's right. So aim to the left of that in case we don't get a clearance. We okay. don't want to go into Amberley before we get the clearance. Okay. Right, level off there, 2000. It'll keep us legal. a little bit more to the left of Spring Mountain, he's uh, taking a long time, he's probably very busy. Okay. Gilo, Gilo, Romeo, identified, cleared to work by Spring Mountain, 2000 initially, QNH 1010, and verify level. Cleared to work direct, uh, 2000, and QNH 1010, Kilo Juliet, Romeo. Kilo, Juliet, Romeo, confirming via Spring Mountain, and uh, verify current level. 2100 and via Spring Mountain Kilo, Juliet Romeo. Juliet Romeo. Alright, uh, fix that up to 2000. Hey, now fly the plane first. Yep. Trim, make sure you're in trim. Don't worry about 
logging anything now. This is highly visual here. Kilo Juliet Romeo, climb to 2500, contact approach 126, decimal 2. All right, just say request amended 2000, due cloud, approach 126, decimal 2. Request amendment 2000, due cloud, Kilo Juliet Romeo. Kilo Juliet Romeo, maintain 2000. 2000, Kilo Juliet Romeo. I uh, see the and approach 126 decimal 2 kilo Juliet Romeo. There's a trick point down there. So oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yep. So, okay, turn, turn now. Turn onto track. Clear, yep. clear, clear. Turn now. By the plane, don't worry about administrating. There's Mount Walker. Uh, Hayes, is it like way out there? Yeah, Hayes, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, got it. What's our heading? Our heading is uh, 231 to Warwick. Approach 126 decimal 2. We've got one minute to get this one. 26 decimal 2. Okay, go ahead. Amberley approach, Kilo Juliet Romeo, maintaining 2000. Kilo Juliet Romeo, Amberley approach. We said we were going to be flying over a lake to yep. determine if we were on track. Can you see that lake? Uh, I saw it before we got it. It's just here. Yes. Yep. Well, it's highly visual, this stuff. Compass and DI must be aligned. Okay, got that? Uh, compass and DI is looking good. Right, fly your heading. Hold a constant heading. Once you've completed that clear -o cycle, as part of the clear -o, you'll do your logging. Okay. I'll just I'll wait till we're past this hill and then I'll do a clear -o. Time of departure, Archfield, 5 8. And time overhead Spring Mountain, more importantly. Overhead Spring Mountain, time 0 6. I'll tidy up that altitude again. There's really no room for deviation. Okay, so run, run ready. Uh, leave control area descending visual, no comma approved, identification and control service terminated, frequency change approved, no traffic OCT. Copy traffic, when ready, leave control airspace descending, no comma approved, Stanley 51. Stanley 51, uh, leave control area descending visual. Leave control area descending visual, Stanley 51. Juliet Charlie. Bar established outside controlled airspace. Identification and control service terminated. Bring to change approved. Good day. Bravo Juliet Charlie. Good day.
Roddy, this says real, there's zero uh, margins in control. Two miles Juliet, Romeo, three miles running control to Earth, please. Identification and control service terminated, free to change approved. Hold on. Three miles to run, the frequency change approved at the boundary, Kilo Juliet, Romeo. Three miles to run, frequency change approved at the boundary, Kilo Juliet, Romeo. We depart Spring Mountain. Uh, time zero six Spring Mountain. Uh, how many minutes we've we been flying already? Five. Five, Five about minutes. About three miles. Covered, uh, how many miles should we have covered? About three miles. In what time? Five minutes. Five minutes. So total oh, yes. one and a half miles. A minute. Correction. Yeah. Uh, eight miles. Probably eight miles or so. Yeah. So what should we see on the chart? Eight miles downstream. What should we see on the chart here? miles, we should see peak crossing, we should see a road. Um, okay, there's a town. Town with a road uh, going north. We've just town. passed by one town. Yep. We've got another town and another one. We see that on the chart? Yes. So see these three water. towns and Mount Walker I've got there. All right. Can you pinpoint our location in relation to this town right here? Uh, this town, I would say we're right on that green line there. Uh, that town will be Harrisville. Okay, we'll write it down as a pinpoint. Okay. And passing by Harrisville at a certain time. Just tidy that up again. Yep. We don't have the horizon attitude today because of the mist, so you're going to have to just fly with a slightly higher nose attitude than you feel. Yep. Okay, we're off to the southeast of Harrisville, pinpoint at time 112213. I dropped me pan. Okay, now uh, that means from our route study, we know that Harrisville is outside the control zone. So we can change our frequency now. Okay, uh, send a frequency. Send a frequency is 112.2. 121.2. 121.2. Fly a wacko chart to field. Okay, for the stop drop. Uh, switch to VFR, press that button. There it is. Let's bring that power back a little bit. You've got a fair whack of power for a low altitude. About 2,450 would be the, the power setting for this altitude. They completed the clear eye cycle. Uh, completely clear -o. Okay, then we'll just fly the plane. Okay. Reassessing our VMC situation straight ahead. Could be on 30 versus 10, there's no reported ISI traffic for right. 1101. Should VMC not be available over the top of the ranges, we will uh, track to uh, Cunningham's Gap. Okay. Do you think you can see Cunningham's gap? Um, yep, I think I can just see it. About our 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's Cunningham's gap. And you can see why you'd be able to pass through that. Yep. What I want you to do is to calculate from a point further upstream, maybe five miles ahead or something. Yeah. Pick a point and work out a rough track that will get us to Cunningham's Gap. Okay. So uh, Mount Walker is here. We're probably 
just uh, just this side of that black dot. And Cunningham's gap there, and we're tracking 231. I would subtract maybe 15 to 20 degrees from our track. So maybe uh, 215. Right, that's from pres present position. Yeah, from present position. Okay, to confirm that, if we did turn that many degrees, yep, that would confirm that would be the position. Hey, looking ahead, do you think it, we can get over this? Not at this height, no. Okay. Then if you can pick something on the ground, try and maybe a highway crossing, a road intersection, a town or something. Yep. And maybe even that hill. If we track to a right right fly that hill, yep. uh, we'll be able to pinpoint our location. We'll know where we turned. Got some road features around here. That way we'll be able to draw a line to Cunningham's Gap or we conduct that diversion. OK, I don't see that hill on this map. That's probably not shown then. No, I don't think so. So there's a tower to our right. Oh, yeah, that's, that was Mount Walker, right? Yeah, yeah. Mount Walker. So uh, we're just past a beam Mount Walker, we know that we're on track. Let's just mark a pinpoint there. Just past do me a favour and grab my pen. Where is it? It's just here. Yep, got it. So we're now past Thanks. a beam Mount Walker, I'd say two miles past a beam Mount Walker. Yep. Put a mark on the chart there, draw a line to Cunningham's Gap and let's get going. OK. We know that we're pretty much on track. Mahinia 027, contact centre on 124 decimal 625. 124 625, Mahinia 027. Stations broadcast military low jet traffic uh, 1C17, Stallion 51 is uh, Operating on a jet route, not above 5,000 feet AGL, currently 70 or currently 58 miles to the southwest of Amberley and tracking to position 71 miles to the southwest at time 21 and then to 9 or 5 miles to the uh, west southwest at time 27 and then to 9 or 4 miles to the southwest at time 32 and then 8 7 miles to the uh, southwest at time 3-7, center out. Okay, we probably won't see him, he'll be gone by the time we get around. Thank you, Data Alpha, Summer. Departed, King of Lake Time 1-6. Okay, now just to, just to brief you on what's happening here, we are now in Class Golf Airspace. Yep. Now what's the low level of uh, the restricted area here? The low level of the restricted area is... Roy, area QNH 1012. 12. 1 2. 1 0 1 2, Yankee Delta Alpha, thanks. Um, the, uh, the restricted area lower level is 4,500. Okay, now we, we're class golf airspace, we can operate up to 3,000 feet remaining clear of cloud. So let's do that. We can, well, let's climb to 3,000 feet. By 3,000? Sorry. By 3,000 to remain clear of cloud, you know? That's right. Uh, we're, we're allowed to do that. We can go right up to the cloud base. Yep. Uh, oh, we could go to 4,500 if it kept us clear of the cloud, is it? Uh, 1,000 feet. Once you get above 3,000 feet, you need 1,000 feet separation. Oh, yes, right, OK. Below okay. the cloud. But we've got to be careful we don't enter in the restricted area in the process. Yep. I'll just double check that. Confirm. OK, 
Okay, we're well past the Beam Funa and, and the other town that we were talking about. There's a big dam to my right, to my left. Yep, a large uh, water feature there. 5,300, climbing flight level 3. Is this one here? Jumbo 23. Uh, Lake Mulura. Uh, we're definitely, definitely under 4,500 steps. Melbourne via Gumba Pandrew, climb level 360, top end 130. This is going to Melbourne via Gumba Pandrew, climb level 360, top end 130. This is going to Crickabits. Now the next problem that we have will be, once you've leveled off, I want you to calculate a new heading, get us to work. So we've got a little angle there, and once you've leveled off, that bit of mix sorted out, because this is the this is definitely an eyes outside situation here. Now failing that, the easiest way might be just to go to Maryvale. Maryvale's along the road. We know where Maryvale is. We just go there and then adopt our plan. We keep the power on while we accelerate. We've still got to accelerate, so keep that power on. Right, we clear a cloud at 3,000 feet. Uh, looks like we can pass through Cunningham's gap, remaining clear of cloud. And what time was that diversion started? Uh, that diversion was started at 1.8. Well, we'll note the time that we've passed through Cunningham's gap. Yes. Once we've got high, zero, four, contact, center, one, two, when there's high terrain in the mix, yep. the 3,000 feet can be pushed up. Okay. Because we can operate up to 1,000 feet above terrain yep. while maintaining clear of cloud at any altitude. I would say right now, what I would do right now is to climb to the cloud base. Okay, climb into the cloud base. I estimate our new track, uh, once we make that right turn after the gap, at 235 magnetic. Now keep an eye out for other aircraft passing through Cunningham's Gap. Right. There's two options here. I want you to take the left option. Okay. The hill with the saddle in it that yep. you can see in the foreground is the centre of the Cunningham's Gap area. There's a narrow area where the highway goes through. Yep. To the left there's a much wider space. That's where I'd prefer you to go. You mean on, on, on the left of the saddle? That's right. Level off at 3,500 feet. Keep the power on until you accelerate. We'll aim to the left hand side of that mountain with the saddle on top and it'll give you a much wider area to pass through. So we're, we're going to go on the other side of that saddle? That's right, around okay. it. Give us more separation from other aircraft coming head on, more ability to manoeuvre. Also actually lower. Alright, we're at the cloud base, we're above 3,000 feet but that's okay. Mitchell 13, and just confirming that you'll, uh, on completion of the air work at the Sunshine Coast, you're just continuing on your flight plan route, is that correct? Uh, Mitchell 13, ma'am, we'll be coming back out to Romeo 650 Bravo. Mitchell 13 copied, and uh, that is available, uh, however, it's probably better if you will track a via saver and then to iTide just to facilitate the sequence into the Sunshine Coast. So you have a clearance to... Uh, now we need to make a decision here at Cunningham's Gap whether we continue. So looking in the distance, yep. you can see a lot of sunshine on the ground, which means that the cloud base is probably... it's not broken because the sun's coming through. And it looks like it's no worse than it is here. I agree. So give yourself plenty of separation from terrain because okay. of the, the turbulence in the lee, like Shirley Strawn, etc. Yep. And also to avoid other aircraft because they might be coming head on. And just so uh, there's a force landing area to my left. Yep. Okay, turning around here, you can climb now because the cloud base has just risen. Turn here and head towards Maryvale. We know where Maryvale is. 
Because of our route study, there it is. We're expecting to see it in the valley after Cunningham's Cap. We'll re-intercept our track at Maryvale. Again. We shall re-intercept our track at Maryvale. Okay, yep. And on your return leg, uh, will you be uh, returning to Williamtown? And if so, via Scott, would that work? At the moment we're climbing to maximise our gliding range in the event of an engine failure yep, because anything that we've got is straight ahead. After we've got to those four landing areas we will then reassess the level that we should be cruising at. Okay. Okay, time passing through the gap. Line 26, Cunningham's gap. 26. Level off at 4,000 initially, right? 4,000 until we can resolve what the cloud base is. Okay, conduct a clear O cycle. Top end 130, recreate present position, direct gizmo. Recreate present position, direct gizmo. Top end 130. Oh, please, T's are green, Vassin's green. As part of engine, we should link the mixture. I'll do that if I can have access to the mixture there. There's peak, two winds in. No lent. Oximetry, 4,000. Get identified and I reported ISR traffic, area security, 1012. And clear of the lab. That leaves for Archfield, Firewacker, I've got Radios, I'll get uh, Warwick, CTAF ready. At 127.85. Okay, and we're currently tracking west. Cunningham's gap behind us with Maryvale on the nose. Yeah, orientation, Cunningham's gap, the, the highway there as per the WAC chart towards the next town. Now according to our navigation, we've been flying for three minutes since Cunningham's gap. We should have covered about five miles or so. Looking from Cunningham's gap forward on the chart, uh, do we see? Do we actually see a town from that position? Uh, Maryvale? Yeah, yeah that's just it. Uh, what I'm saying is, if we've been flying for five minutes since Cunningham's Gap, yep, so do we see a town? Yes, we do. Yes, that's about eight miles to Maryvale, yep. That Maryvale will uh, continue on with our planned navigation. Okay. And you have it to climb to 4,500? Uh, it doesn't give us enough cloud separation. I'd I'd, what's our overflow at Warwick? Uh, overflow at Warwick is 3,000. Alright, just descend to 3,500 then. 3,500? Okay. standard level, but we can do what we want below 5,000 feet. Yep. Yeah, we're doing, we, we're ch making changes, but we're logging every single change. Yep. And then making it easy for ourselves by adopting our planned route into Warwick. Okay, Mary Vale, it's, it's a town. When ready, this is Mary Vale. That's a town to the left hand side of the road. Yep, there it is. That's the town. That Mary Vale, that time, uh, half hour. 3 0, Mary Vale. Got a new heading set up there. I do. Okay, clear right. Clear ahead.
Clear left. Stations broadcast military low jet traffic, uh, Stadium 51, 1C17 is uh, estimating position 48 miles to the south of Milmerin at time 32, then striking to position 20 miles to the south of Milmerin at time 37, then uh, 8 miles to the southeast of Milmerin at 41, and then returning to Ambly. Operations 5,000 feet, or correction, uh, not above 5,000 feet AGL. Okay, uh, first checkpoint means that we need to look out at the terrain here. Once we've set course, what do we expect to see? We've set course at Maryvale. We go back to be uh, flying parallel, or we're at the road should be to our right because we, where we intercepted track was over the town and not over the track itself. So I expect to be parallel to the road, but we're right yep. over this side of the road. If this works out, we might end up being to the left of the aerodrome. Okay. Uh, straight ahead of us, we should be able to see a large town, a big body of water Mitchell beyond it. Uh, large town. Mitchell 13, Emily, requested if you could call the uh, air. Okay, uh, collect the information to okay. conduct your approach and descent brief. Sorry, say again. Amberley would like you to call them on your second radio, thanks. Uh, right now, you need to uh, collect the information for your approach brief. Okay. And deliver an approach brief for how we're going to do this. Okay. So I'm going to make a radio call into uh, Warwick, CTO call. Runways 09 and 27 at Warwick. It's uh, the aerodrome is on the northwestern side of the town. And uh, so we'll overfly at 3000, get a sight on the windsock, collect the runway and then conduct a midfield crosswind join. Unless there's circuit traffic already established. Uh, yeah, uh, if there's already circuit traffic, I will select that runway that's in use at the time. Okay, you need to nominate or calculate a top of descent yep. uh, position and uh, 10 miles out. Alpha Golf Golf, contact center now, 123. So we're about 10 miles now. And uh, we just got to lose 500 feet to get to our overfly height. Alright then, give a radio call. Warwick traffic, Cessna 172 Kilo, Juliet Romeo is 10 miles to the east of the airfield. Estimate time in circuit 4-0 for traffic. Okay, now flying left of the heading buck, how we, we, when we intercepted track at Maryvale, we, we, uh, we started off with a one and a half mile error there. Yeah. That is the road that we're going to be paralleling. Yeah. I reckon that we, the aerodrome, if you can see the town there, and we're heading towards the town on that heading that you're on yeah, before. The the aerodrome is going to be significantly more to the right of the town than where you've got the nose pointed. Yep. So just check out the... So we haven't heard anything there on the Warwick DTAP. Point the nose where you think Warwick would be. Uh, I th uh, Warwick Airport I think will be... Up there. Now, how many miles away from the town? So a significant different distance, about five miles, five yep. miles to the northwest of the town. Yep. So we're going to have some sort of a guess at what five miles is from the edge of the town. Yeah, if I shoot a line from the highway, 
pretty much in the step set. Circuits there, so I'll tidy up these charts who don't want anything loose okay. in the cockpit. Floating around that could foul the controls. Move my seat back. Aerodrome in sight. Okay, can you just take control for a moment, please? Heading over. 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 Thank you. Okay, I'm good. Right, heading over. Taking over. Thank you. Now, what's the expected wind there on the ground? What do you, what do you I would expect a northerly based on the forecast. What are the clouds doing? Clouds are coming from that direction, yeah. but it doesn't mean that it's doing that on the ground. Right. Yeah, the forecast did the wind direction change quite a bit due to height. So I'm going to descend to overfly height. Keep your eyes peeled. Yep. Is overfly. Yeah, it's 3,000, or well, just below 3,000. Alright then, take an active step to fix that up. The wind stop in sight will be taking one way two seven. Uh, just wait until you come up right much closer. Okay. Before you make that decision. Over one. It looks like two seven, but we need to confirm it with a closer look. Okay, okay. It can be deceptive. Get uh, optical illusions. Also need to see if the wind sock service will sometimes get tangled around the pole. Oh uh, yeah, good point. Seven. Yeah, confirming 2-7, it's straight down the runway. They descend on the dead side. 
have no turns contrary to the circuit. I want you to wait, taking over. Hang over. What we do here is maintain overfly, clear okay. right, clear ahead. Left. Then we maintain overfly like that. Turn around till we get to the dead side. Oh yeah, right, okay. Yeah, I made a miscalculation. But we'll just go we're going over to the live side, but not descending. Right. I'll give you the um, uh, demonstration of, of the descent using the rate one turn. Nice thermal there. Okay, descent power, half screen attitude. We've passed over the field. We are yeah, we're over the top of one here ahead. Clear left, 500 feet per minute. Right one turn, 500 feet per minute. Out there, and we're descending down to what altitude? Uh, 2,500 for circuit height. I want to average this out at 500 feet per minute, it's a bit difficult with those thermals. All rudder there. 2,500 did you say? Yes, I done. So this will inject us into the circuit in the correct direction at the right height. Okay. Hey, handing over. Taking over. Midfield crosswind. Warwick traffic Cessna 172, Kilo Juliet Romeo joins a midfield crosswind for a left circuit on runway 27 Warwick. Seatbelt's done up, doors latched. Traffic system 172, Kilo Juliet Romeo join, uh, turning base, runway 27, Warwick.
on a traffic Cessna 172 Kilo Juliet Romeo going around runway 27 Warren. sequence sure. and we'll tidy up what happened last okay. time. Okay, bring the power back to the bottom of the green. Bottom of the green. Holding that attitude one stage of flap. Just uh, push forward against that pitch up, wait for 10 seconds. Okay, then after that just tidy up whatever trim remains. Okay, carburetor heat on. Wait for a little bit longer. Bring the power back to 1,700 RPM. 1,700. The level attitude. Check speed. Flaps 20. I push forward to the half screen attitude. Hold it there. Grip, and you're looking for 75. That confirms the attitude. The attitude isn't, isn't there yet. Lower nose. Okay. Lower. Okay. There it is now. There it is. Okay. Clear right. Clear ahead. Clear left. Now holding that attitude. You can maintain 75 knots. If you want to control your rate of descent, you do so by power, not attitude. If you want to reduce your rate of descent, put in some more power. For example, put in 2000 RPM, holding the same attitude. You can see the rate of descent disappeared. Now bring it back to 1700. That rate of descent will, will come back to 500 again. Okay, clear right, clear ahead, clear left, stick and rudder. There we are, 500 feet on final. Uh, traffic warning, Jabiru 370, is 10 miles to the south at 7,800, uh, we'll be overflying uh, for GAT traffic work. Warwick traffic, Cessna 172 Kilo Juliet Romeo is on short final for runway 27, conducting left hand circuits, Warwick traffic. Carburetor heat off, right airspeed control, aim point air, airspeed. Stick and runner at these slow speeds.
Alright, simulated engine failure after takeoff. Close the throttle. Carry out the vital actions. Alright, I'm going to be taking this area just here off the top to the front of the nose. Alright, go around. Going around. Operator heat off. All power. You hear that after fire when you pull the throttle back? Yeah. Just move it back slow then no fuel will go through unburnt. Yep. Now Tony, try and have less large movements of the aileron. Okay. If you're using stick and rudder together, you won't need half of that movement that you're putting in the okay. you know, off and you're holding cross controls because you're out of balance. Yep. Alright, you do that again, I'll observe. Okay. Following this touch and go, we will depart overhead, low level, for Clifton. Okay, okay. Traffic Zosna 172, Kilo Julia Romeo turns base for runway 27, Warwick. We just went halfway around the clock there. Once you get to the top of the clock there, we'll be on 500 feet uh, turning final. Taking over. 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 Taking over.
Oh, just a thermal. So the correct response is stick and rudder, like that, stick and rudder. There's lots and lots of rudder. That'll do the most of the heavy lifting for you. All right, handing over. All right. Over. Going full right rudder and it kept going, so sorry about that. There's a bit of thermal V. Eyes on that centre line. Don't take your eyes off till everything's sorted. And because uh, just watch that flap. Okay, let's go. Uh, would you mind grabbing my uh, 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 nav log? Yep, certainly. Thanks. About right, 300 feet after takeoff. 300 feet. Yeah, flaps up. Pictures full. P's and T's are in the green. Backing's in the green. Positive rate of climb. All right. Uh, what I want you to do is uh, at 500 feet, uh, stop climb. Turn left. Continue the turn and depart overhead the centre of the field. Okay, 500 feet AGL. Left turn. And track for Clifton is heading 324. to give a radio call overhead the field. Okay. That will be uh, departs overhead the field, low level, Port Clifton. Once you're overhead, we'll set course over the centre of the field. Right, set up the heading bug. Confirm the compass and DI is aligned. Three, two, four. Three, two, four. Three, two, four, we're at Clifton. Right, always make a big show of clearing the turn. And uh, the time to Clifton is eight minutes. Overhead. We were there for a half an hour, I think. Alright, time overhead is zero zero. Warwick traffic, Cessna 172 Kilo, Juliet Romeo departs overhead the field for Clifton. Low level, Warwick. Once we've set course, uh, straight into a clear eye cycle. Okay, straight into a clear eye. Thomas and DI is aligned. We are on track for 3 4 1 Clifton. Alright, so we expect time to arrive at Clifton at time 08. Alright, you can log that as, uh, but do it, do so because you need your eyes outside.
particularly with low level. Okay. There's more birds, more drones, hills, uh, obstacles, TV towers, etc. Yep. ETA for Clifton. ETA yeah, Clifton's time zero eight. Okay, log engine T's and P's. Engine T's and P's are in the green. Right, fuel tanks. Fuel tanks indicating efficient quantity fuels on both. Okay, altimetry right. will be coming up to Clifton soon. Uh, what's the CTAF frequency for Clifton? Uh, CTAF for Clifton is 127, uh, correction, 126.7, standard CTAF. 1267, oh, one, uh, Unicom. And uh, I'd say we're 10 miles out now. Clifton traffic Cessna 172 Kilo, Julia Romeo is 10 miles south of the field. Expect time in the circuit, 08. Clifton. So radio's orientation. Uh, we've departed Warwick. We've been flying for three minutes. We, in against this wind, we would have covered no more than five miles. Okay. Have, a look at, have a look at the chart, see yep. what features on the chart are indicated. No, not outside yet. Oh, Just right. have a look at the chart, yep. clock map ground. What features on that chart are five miles out on that track? Uh, there's another airport to our right, that's a, a bit more than five miles. Uh, there's also a town to the west of Clifton, that's about five miles. Uh, Any roads, line features? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a road that's probably about seven miles. And I can see a tower just behind me at about my uh, eight o'clock position. This tower just here. Okay, you've got, so you've got an idea where you are for orientation purposes. Is there any track error correction required that you can calculate? Uh, can I vote again, please? I think uh, no track error correction required. The tower was two miles to my left, All right. as expected. A okay, descent back down to 500 AGL. 500. 2,000 feet. Clifton uh, is runways 06 and 26. Unpaved. Are you sure? That doesn't sound oh, right. No, I do have it there. What's 06? No, that doesn't make sense. What's the reciprocal of 06? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, two, two. No, it's two. Uh, four. So if one's 06, yeah, the other one's two four. Yeah, so that. So next page, I think it's on. Zero six two four. Zero six two four. Uh, the circuit only exists to the to the south of the airfield. Right. So should we are we going to enter the pattern at five hundred feet? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, runway two four. If, uh, if the weather at Warwick is consistent here, and it feels as if it is. Then it'll be a left-hand circuit on runway 24. Okay, so how do you do a join from 500 feet? 
Uh, either join uh, probably upwind. Probably an upwind join would be the best. Okay. What's our ETA, did you say? 08. 